Greetings everyone, the Good Sir Knight here. Been away for a while, terribly sorry about that. I've been sick. I'm better now, that's the important part. Bit of a cough, but everything else is cleaned up a bit. I'm, um... Sorry, the camera's following my face. It's like moving all over the place. Anyway, I'll fix that later. So anyway, I've been gone for a bit, and uh, I've been feeling better. Finally got better, so, um, finally got a chance to film a video now. And I have been making a few upgrades. I haven't just completely forgot about Airsoft. Well, I've been sick. When the times I wasn't lying around and feeling absolutely terrible, I ordered some uh, new parts, got a few improvements made, and wanted to tell you guys a little story. So back in the day, like way back in the day when I was a lot younger, there was a game called Police Quest V. That was the first time I'd ever encountered a lash device and MP5s. Well, as far as MP5s, I got my MP5 SD, which was super awesome, but it had the uh, little, oh, what was it, the extendable stock? I mean, it's pretty cool, but I've always been more into the, uh, because uh, I was used to the actual, like, fixed stock sort of MP5 thing. So I looked around and I found something. I found a fixed stock made exactly by SEMA, just particularly for this. And, I don't know, I think it's mostly just because it's aesthetically pleasing. But it feels a lot better, no shake to it or anything. It actually has uh, grooves to slide to the little side where the uh, extendable stock would go. And it, I don't know, it looks like a completely different gun to me because of the stock. And I like it a lot. And still MP5, so you've got all the cool MP5 things. The most important thing with an MP5 that everyone buys one for is that. A nice little loading and uh, chambering and everything. So, the key thing, an interesting thing they did with the design-wise is the uh, cable that connects to the battery that's usually up in here, and the handguard, can actually be, uh, there's a second connection point in here. So the cable connects and runs a secondary wire up through the front. So you can deconnect that wire, put a little extension on it, and you can actually fit a large battery in the buttstock, which is padded and pops free here. So pretty cool stuff. I'm uh, trying to get everything on my wolf sling again, but the thing is, with the uh, more old school thing, it's designed to have a, a three-point sling that will basically just slide in through here. Then, as I've posted earlier, this is to actually catch a little, uh, a little ring. So it'll hold three-point across your chest just fine, if you need it and go to shoulder it, that ring will actually pop free. You'll have a lot more maneuverability and freedom with the rifle. Or submachine gun, I guess you wouldn't really call it a rifle, huh? Doesn't shoot rifle rounds, uses a 9mm, 9x19 Parabellum, so... Yeah, that was pretty cool. That was one thing I really liked. And uh, there's something I haven't used in quite a while. But, as I was mentioning, the lash device, what was really fascinating about this... Mind you, I'm like, what, five, six of this time? Well, here's my lash device that actually started... Oh no, my earpiece. I actually started not too long ago with. It's got a nice little button here that can connect and it's rotisserie. So this is a nice little piece and this can actually, uh, where is it? Clips in down here. I actually want to look for the, uh, whatchamacallit. And this is the part where they have the audio jack down here so you can actually sw take this part out and put in a small coiled earpiece that might actually sit into your ear. The only problem with, uh, this one I have, one of the reasons I don't use it too really often is it only has a little earplug. So that goes, you plug that into your ear, and okay, yeah, you got your Secret Service look going on. When you're moving everything, you got a helmet on, this will fall out freely, quite frequently, and it can actually get in the way of communications. But the big interesting part that I really like about Lash Devices was that you have these pickups right here. And this one's kind of a bit of an awkward size, but basically what you want to do so you want to take one of these pickups and on the side of your larynx against the voice box areas where you want to have one of them sit while it's wrapped on your neck then you have the earpiece inserted and what that will do is you can talk in a really really low voice to where the per so basically where if you have a uh, situation with the suspects next door and everything or he could be hearing you the walls could be really thin with the lash device you can practically whisper as long as you're getting enough vocal vibration practically whisper and everyone else pick it up loud and clear in their ears. So you can coordinate really close quarters uh, planning and everything in a bit more of a stealth environment. So it's great for stealth. It was uh, really popular. I think these were mostly popular in like the 70s and whatnot when the technology became available. But yeah, since technology's moved on about 40 years from then, now you have the more popular thing where everything's loud and lots of bang and everything. So now sword ends are the popular way to go as Redbeard got me into. I actually got this pair off of him. Now you have a uh, little earpiece jack and these will actually cancel out explosions and everything so 
Yeah, it could be a bit more, a bit more useful. It'll drown out any of the extra sound of loud bangs and everything, gunfire, explosions, and everything. And you'll still have the uh, little pickups. So you can hear fabric rustling or bushes moving and everything in order to divert your attention. So these are also fascinating. The other, the only real issue is all these like really heavy military grade equipment things and plugs and everything. And also, I found a way to get them to fit properly. All you have to really do is take the cable and have it kind of like sit back over your shoulder and then plug into the, uh, the little chest piece up here. So and I'll solve that problem. It might, fit, it might feel a little weird. I'm still getting used to it, but these things are pretty nice and you can wear them with a helmet, you can wear them with a hat, all that good stuff. So anyway, I've also been working on the play carrier and all that stuff. I've got it a bit lighter, so I moved this back up here because now I got it to actually fit over the shoulder without causing any problems. I moved the tourniquet into the um, actual, I'm wearing it right now, but it's in the uh, medical, the uh, first aid kit on the back of my belt, so I can actually remove this. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it yet, though. I mean, I could fit grenades on there, I could leave it slick and lightweight. I could do something with it. Haven't decided what yet, so this is going to come off. Don't mind the Luigi, that he's up there in the meantime while I'm doing other things. So yeah, there's all that. This has been slicked out, and chem lights removable, they're just there for, uh, well, because I had nothing else to put there at the time. Now, an interesting thing I've actually been thinking of, so I'm going to show you here in a minute. So I haven't been using my Blackhawk holster too much, because I'm now using the, uh, was it, Redbeard's old, uh, Granite Gear belt, so I'll actually get to that in a second. But this little pocket here that actually goes onto the inside is big enough for a, uh, Glock 26. So I can actually keep my Glock in there, draw and fire it and everything. Bit of a pain to put back, especially because I'm having trouble getting my slings to work on my MP5, but... Yeah, so back here, as you can see, there is the Blackhawk hydro, micro hydro pouch, or mini hy side hydro pouch. It's got a weird name. But yeah, it's a lot smaller, which is nice. It still holds water. It fits across uh, four of your molly bits. And you can run the hose up through here. You can run over the shoulder. You can run it down low. Any way you want to run it. Scissors in the back. And yes, this has been significantly lighter. Here's my uh, old one point wool sling. Still trying to figure out how I'm going to attach it because as I was showing you earlier with this kind of buttstock thing we got going on here with only a single loop the material is actually like double looped up here because you know you'd run through and then loop through it so it doesn't, doesn't want to fit into this. I could wrap it around the stock up higher but it's still going to come loose whenever it's not attached to any weight so I'm going to figure that one out in the near future here. I would love to get an actual uh, old, old type of three point or even just a two point, something that I could sling it over my shoulder with, but airsoft guns, not as durable. You always run the risk that one of these uh, connector points will just break on you, and then your gun falls and can break because it's not as durable as a real one. So, yeah, there's that. So, trying to figure out what to do with this. I might just, uh, hmm. Yeah, I'm not actually terribly sure. I'll figure that one out. But, yeah, I mean, it looks pretty awesome, so. So yeah, not as sick anymore. Got this to figure out what to do with. And um, ah, so the belt. I've been trying to figure it out what I want to do exactly with it. I could technically still carry a pistol with the way it is now, but I don't really feel like it. So practically, you've got the grenade launcher and a grenade. So one of each. I swapped into uh, the old dump pouch I initially got from Redbeard. And it's now sitting here because it could be mounted up and only take up two spaces, which leaves extra room for uh, handgun mag pouches. But if I'm not going to be using that, I could swap this into grenades or something else. So there's options there. I'll figure it out. If I just run the pistol, I could fit in that pocket. It'll be out of the way. But if I ever need to use it, then it's going to be out of ammo for the MP5. So we'll see how that goes. And yeah, my old tornado grenade's back. Because uh, Jin was able to uh, get a hold of it from... Uh, Sergeant 58 when they're doing some cleaning so that's pretty cool and that's pretty much what I've been working on so on that today I went out um, did some rock climbing and all that good stuff so yeah I would say basically in summary I am alive and I should be getting back into playing sometime in the future however I was sick really rapidly on and off for like the past two months almost so as far as fitness level goes I might have declined quite a bit so Came back into the running and everything. Today was a lot of good exercise. I'll probably go running again tomorrow. Keep the uh, pace going. And uh, yeah, so that's what I'm planning to do. So you guys take care. Stay chivalrous. Stay safe out there. And uh, don't do drugs. Cheers.